So I've been hearing what you guys have been saying, and I'm here to tell you why you're all wrong. I'm going to tell you filthy casuals why UFC 289 might look weak on the surface to you, but to an MMA savant like myself, it's going to be a banger. At least I hope. So let me blow your minds and take you casuals through the main card. But before we get started, go ahead and jab that like button and subscribe, and let's get right into it. So in the main event of UFC 289, Amanda Nunes defends her bantamweight title against Mexican contender Irene Aldana. So this was originally supposed to be the trilogy between Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena, but Pena pulled out due to an injury to her ribs, and Aldana stepped in. You know, I hope Pena has a speedy recovery. That being said, I think this new matchup is way better. You know, Aldana's going to look to ride that momentum that Mexican MMA has been on with Brandon Moreno, Yair Rodriguez, and then her teammate Alexa Grasso. So this fight will be competitive on the feet. You know, both fighters are good strikers with good power. Aldana's got a lot of movement, and Nunes is going to look to catch her. You know me, I'm an honest man. I'll never lie to y'all faces. So I'm going to let you know right now that this fight will probably slow down when Nunes starts to wrestle, which she will. You know, Aldana's takedown defense is not the best. She did get taken down a ton by Holly Holm, which kind of tells you where her takedown defense is at. And Nunes has never shied away from taking the path of least resistance like she did against the GDR. So it's going to have its moments. But it's probably going to slow down at times. But that's okay. You know, it won't be Ngannou versus Lewis. So it'll be a solid fight. And my prediction that no one asked for is Nunes by decision. So in the co-main event, we have probably the most anticipated fight on the card. This is the fight that casuals call the real main event. You know, Charles Dubronx Oliveira takes on perennial lightweight contender Benil Dariush. You know, there's a lot at stake as the winner of this fight is guaranteed to fight for the lightweight title next. You know, we already know how chaotic and dangerous Charles is when it comes to striking, but he's facing another chaotic striker with good power that can make Charles pay for his lackluster defense. You know, I really hope that this fight turns into one of those striking battles that happens between two great grapplers like Kobe versus Usman did, but the odds are this fight hits the ground. And both these guys are elite with their Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oliveira has 21 wins by submission, and Benil has 8. You know, and I'm not sure what y'all think, but I think Dariush is going to have a light advantage when it comes to the grappling, but I think that's mostly due to his strength. I think he's stronger in the grappling positions, and we've seen Oliveira get stalled out by some strong wrestlers and grapplers. Whether this fight stays on the feet or it heads to the mat, odds are we are going to have a very good time. So my prediction that no one asked for is Dariush by decision. So in the middle of the card, we got a matchup between two fighters that you might not know of. If that's you, I hate to break it to you, but you're a filthy casual. Because this would be my pick for fight of the night if Dan Ige and Nate Land weren't on this card. You know, Mike Malat is going to be fighting in his home country of Canada, so he's going to be charged up on that maple syrup when he faces off against Adam Fugit. Yeah, it's pronounced Fugit, not Fugit, you casual. You know, both guys are still young in the UFC. This will only be their third fight with the organization, but they've already made some noise in those fights. You know, Malat might sound a little familiar because you probably saw the highlight where he absolutely starched Mickey Gall. After that, he actually got a nice submission win over Johan Lanese, and Adam Fugit got into the UFC by taking a short notice fight against a huge prospect prospect than Michael Morales. If you don't know Morales, then damn, you're a casual. But he lost that fight, but he actually had some really good moments in it. Then with the full camp, he faced another prospect in Kinoshita, and he won big time with a huge first round TKO. You know, these guys are going to bring fireworks and will probably end up being one of the better fights on the card if someone doesn't go to sleep early. So do not miss this fight. It's going to be a banger. And my prediction that no one asked for is Malat by decision. So we got a featherweight banger as Dan 50k Ige tries to protect his ranking against Nate the Train Landwehr. And man, after a rough three fight losing skid, Dan Ige got back on track with a vicious knockout of Damon Jackson, being true to his name and winning performance of the night and that sweet, sweet 50k. You know, he's always been game and he's fought some of the best guys in the division. He'll be ready to try and stop the momentum of Nate. You know, Nate's been on an absolute roll, full steam ahead for Nate the Train. You know, he's on a three fight win streak with wins over Austin Lingo. David Onama and Ludovic Klein and he is relentless and just like Ige he is always game and he is down to throw down so this is my pick for fight of the night I can see Ige playing this safe by shooting for takedowns when it gets too chaotic but I'm not sure he can hold Nate down for long skill wise Ige is the better fighter but if Nate can draw Dan into a dog fight it's anybody's fight to win and my prediction that no one asked for I'm gonna go ahead and take the underdog landward by decision 
Let's open up the card. We got a fun matchup between the power bar, Mark andre Barrio, and your boy, Eric Anders. Barrio will also have home field advantage when he steps in the octagon. You know, he's got the power of a rogue moose. 10 of his 15 wins are by knockout or TKO. He works at a very high rate, and his output is enough to drown his opponents. You know, he's coming off a win over Julian Marquez, where he absolutely drowned him with his pace and his output. If Anders gets sucked into that type of fight, he might not be able to keep up. You know, Eric Anders came out very aggressive in his last fight against Cal Dawkins. He did win by TKO after coming out guns blazing. He also has power. Nine of his 15 wins are by knockout or TKO. So both guys will try to land their shots first. And this could easily turn into a brawl. And I'm sure that's what the UFC brass had in mind when putting this fight on the main card. And my prediction that no one asked for is Barrio by TKO. Yep, and that's why you casuals should tune in for UFC 289. It's got the potential to produce some very entertaining fights, and even the prelims got some really good stuff. You got the action man Chris Curtis taking on Nasser Dean Imovov to close out the prelims. Don't miss out. Don't get that FOMO, you know? Don't forget to tune in. It's going to be a great night of fights, and I'll see you casuals next time.